Hello, Mustangs. I am here to share the story of Finnegan, the hungriest monster you'll ever meet. Please enjoy Bone Soup by Cambria Evans. Being nothing more than skin and bone, Finnegan had to live by his wits. He had no family or house to haunt, but he was known across the land for having a ravenous appetite. Everyone knew that wherever Finnegan went, he always brought his eating stool, his eating spoon, and his gigantic eating mouth. I actually have of Finnegan here. One Halloween, Finnegan's travels took him through a barren land. What a lovely place, Finnegan thought. I'm sure I can find a Halloween feast here. But as Finnegan grew closer to town, a witch passed by. Happy Hallows Night, he said. Do you know where the feast is? The witch took one look at Finnegan and quickly flew away. seem like he's going to be greeted with open arms. Back in town, the witch told the beast. The beast told the zombies. The zombies told the mummy. And before you knew it, the entire town was talking about the impending arrival of Finnegan the Eater. Here comes Finnegan. We don't need a big mouth like that. We have barely enough for ourselves. I've heard he is worse than a plague of locusts. Who's Finnegan? In a panic. The witch booby-trapped her jar of eyeballs. No one's getting to my eyeballs. The beast locked his bat wings up into the cupboard. The zombies put their frog legs into the cellar and the mummy and the other town's creatures all hid everything they had to eat. No food for you, Finnegan. When poor, ever hungry Finnegan came to town, he was surprised that it looked empty. But even more surprised than that, there was no feast. What are these? goblins and ghouls doing on Halloween. So, Finnegan knocked on the witch's door first. Could you spare a bit of food? He called out. I have nothing for you, she, the witch shrieked. Next, Finnegan tried the beast's door. Could you spare some warm cheese bread for a simple traveler? He asked. A simple traveler? The beast said, I know who you are. I have just enough for myself, none to spare. Be gone. At the third door, Finnegan had barely opened his mouth when the zombies all yelled, Go away! No food for you! At the mummy's door, the answer was the same. Not a very generous town. 
And so he went through the whole town, knocking on doors. But not a body nor a soul had any food for Finnegan. Undaunted, good for you, Finnegan. Undaunted, Finnegan collected wood from the forest and built a fire in the middle of town square. He then filled the town's largest cauldron and set the water to boil. Hmm. Yeah. After waiting a time, Finnegan ceremoniously opened his cloak. He took out a magnificent piece of bone. So old that the edges were dry and splintered. And with a toothy grin, <laughs> he dropped it right into the cauldron. Bloop. Finnegan stirred the mixture singing, Bone soup is what I make, a magic bone is all it takes. Boil it long and add some spice, bone soup tastes very nice. Never had bone soup. One by one, the town's creatures opened their doors and they walked toward Finnegan and his fire. What are you singing about? What are you boiling? What a dry old bone. You can't make soup out of that. Any ghoul can tell you so. Finnegan smiled. Well then, I must not be a ghoul for I am making such a soup. The little werewolf crouched down at Finnegan's side. I've never heard of bone soup before, but I think I like it. In some places I have traveled, bone soup is considered a delicacy, said Finnegan. Besides, this is no ordinary bone. This bone is magic. Mm. He tasted the broth again and again and sighed. If only there were stewed eyeballs. With eyeballs, the soup would be very tasty. The little werewolf tugged on Finnegan's cloak. Uh, the witch has a jar of those. I know she does. All the villagers stared at the witch and her face turned even brighter of a shade of green than it was. Yes, uh, I do, stammered the witch, but they're imported. The villagers stared at the witch until she finally fetched some of her stewed eyeball stash. The eyeballs were a fabulous addition to the soup, but soon Finnegan looked wistful. some bat wings in my soup. Can you just imagine the flavor they would add? The little werewolf tugged at Finnegan again. The beast has cupboards full of those. I saw them myself. Embarrassed, the beast fetched an entire box of bat wings. The wings were added and just as Finnegan had said, their flavor was wonderful. Man, that little werewolf sure is being a good buddy to Finnegan. Finnegan continued to stir the soup, but he looked longingly into his cauldron. Now, if only we had some frog legs, this soup would be fit for a king. The little werewolf tugged once more on Finnegan's cloak. The zombies have a cellar filled with those. Just ask them. But before Finnegan could ask, 
the zombie children had fetched all the frog legs they could carry. Hmm. The frog legs were stirred into the broth and soon the cauldron was bubbling with spider eggs, dried mouse droppings, toenail clippings, and dandelions. With a final dusting of slime and sludge, the soup was declared ready. I'd eat it. Of course, the soup is wonderful alone, said Finnegan, but it takes only wormy cheese, bread, and company to make it a true Halloween feast. Go, bring your cheese, bread, and bowl so we can share this bone soup together. Mmm, what a fabulous soup. Yes, such good flavor. Truly fit for a king. To think it was all made from a magic bone. And so it was that Finnegan got his Halloween feast after all. With a final wave to the werewolf, Finnegan quickly left with his eating stool, his eating spoon, and his gigantic smiling mouth. I loved this story and I hope you did too. Don't forget to write a review for your Mustang Tales and let us know about your favorite part of the story. I think mine was when the town decided that they would lend some of their special things to make a grand feast for them all to share.